In this episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief, I sit down with Dan to talk all about Gordian Layers Portal Bound, which is currently on Kickstarter. It reminds me a lot of Summoner Wars or Ashes games like that, as well as we get into the eternal questions that you didn't even know you had, like Gloomhaven or Pandemic Legacy. So I hope you'll stay tuned until after Kickstarter Corner when we can answer this important question for you, as well as you can find out all about what Gordian Layers Portal Bound is all about. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by Table Breakers. Super heavy, solid metal poly dice set. That's right, they're really extra heavy, extra large, metal polyhedral RPG dice set for D&D Dungeons and Dragons, Call of Cthulhu, and tabletop games, and RPGs. They look really heavy, and they're going to give you Christmas delivery. They're over, I want to say, 1,700% funded. As they were going for a thousand dollars, and they're at seventeen thousand, almost five hundred dollars. So yeah, definitely check this out. So you can get bigger, heavier, and dangerouser dice. Is dangerous their word? I don't know, but you can get bigger, heavier, and dangerous dice before Christmas if you back this great project. As it goes through the sixth of November, I would definitely check it out. Speaking of dice, you know what? We're gonna do a giveaway. On Getting Geeky with Game Relief, the Parsec for RPGs from Aaron Kane. It's a great dice box. We recently got one, and we have an extra one to give to one lucky listener. The Parsec is an innovative dice, miniature, and rolling storage tray system designed to store and organize your RPG accessories. It's really cool. They're over. They're at five hundred percent funded, and there's two weeks to get in on this great project. As it ends on Thursday, the twenty fifth of October, check it out. Go ahead and email us at game relief at gamereliefgo dot com. Let us know you heard about it here first on Getting Geeky with Game Relief, and then run over to the page and let us know what you think. Send us that email, and you could win a box yourself to store your dice. As we got one, it's very handcrafted and it magnets on. It's an awesome box. Thanks again, Aaron, for providing one to us. And one to one lucky listener of Getting Geeky with Game Relief. Good luck. Send that email now and we'll announce the winner on the podcast next Wednesday. Thank you. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by Fossil Find, a domino baseboard game. Fossil Find is a domino baseboard game that uses custom double 12 dominoes as game pieces. It's a hefty box and hopefully we'll be able to hear all about it from Trey pretty soon as well as preview it for you so you can find out more about it. Fossil Find, a domino baseboard game, is on Kickstarter through the 18th of November, so go ahead and check it out. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is also proudly being powered by Kill Merlin, a new board game for 2-4 to four off a wizard. It will definitely be one that stays in my collection because it doesn't feel like any other games I own, said the Maple Street blog. They reached their goal in 11 hours, and there's still 8 days to go for you to get in on the fun of this as it goes through Thursday, the 18th of October. So definitely check out Kill Merlin, a new board game for 2-4 to four Awful Wizards. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Life is also proudly being powered by Rodent Rangers, Small Heroes, Big Adventures. It's a family-friendly RPG inspired by classic cartoons of mousy adventures like Chippendale R- Rescue Rangers or Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective, stuff like that. So if you like things like that, as well as awesome art, check out Purple Aether Games, Rodent Rangers, Small Heroes Big Adventures, that's on Kickstarter through the 25th of October. <laughs> Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf.
welcome to Getting Geeky with Game Relief. Glad you could join us. Pull up a chair or sit right here on the couch and cozy up as we talk about four great games that are currently on or going to be on Kickstarter shortly. And then we'll jump into our great interview we had with Dan all about his great game that's currently on Kickstarter as well as getting into some eternal questions that you didn't know you had. Would you like some milk? You want strawberry milk? All I got is chocolate or vanilla. You're going to have to pick out of those. Okay, here you go. Well, sit back, relax, enjoy this Kickstarter corner, and I'll be back with cookies afterwards so you can enjoy those with your milk as well. What is this place? What is it doing here in the Leaves computer? Oh, it's Kickstarter Corner with the Leaves. You like dragons, don't you? Well, this game's just for you then. Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien Relaunch. It's a skirmish-based card game in which two players build armies and battle head-to-head. Dragon Lords reach their goal and they're still going strong. There's another nine days for you to get on the fun of this as it goes through the 19th of October. So definitely go ahead and click the link in the show notes so you can find out everything that's great about Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien Relaunch. You've heard of Level 99 Games. Well... They have a great game on Kickstarter, Battlecon Unleashed, the Ultimate Battlecon Edition. Battlecon Unleashed, the Ultimate Battlecon Edition. You asked, we listened. This is a gigantic Battlecon collector's box you've been waiting for. Also, we rebalanced Eric. And they funded in 8 hours. There's currently 15 stretch goals unlocked. And you know what? We're going to sit down with Chris Solis from Level 99 Games to talk all about BattleCon. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. I believe that will be coming to you this Friday. So make sure you come back for that. And go ahead while you're at it. Check out BattleCon Unleashed, the ultimate BattleCon edition on Kickstarter for 11 more days as it's going through Sunday, the 21st of October. You know I like deck builders, or maybe you don't, but I do. And this game has a lot of building, and it's a deck builder. Check out Builders, the building, building, deck building game. Builders is a deck builder where you're trying to build the tallest and most valuable skyscrapers. This game is on Kickstarter for another two weeks as it goes through the 24th of October, and it looks awesome. They're about a thousand, a little bit over a thousand dollars away from their goal, so go ahead and jump on and check out builders the building building deck building game and you too can build awesome skyscrapers now this game is not currently on kickstarter but it will be maybe you've heard about it maybe you haven't either way we're going to tell you the greatness of it dead sprint the game it's a board game for two to five players that need to outrun a horde of the undead. Try to stay ahead on your turn before the horde takes theirs. So definitely check out this great game. You know when it's coming to Kickstarter? Well, maybe not, but I do. This great game, Dead Sprint, is coming to Kickstarter on the 16th of October. So about a week from now, And it's going through the 14th of November, so you'll definitely want to check out Dead Sprint when it comes. We'll have a link. You can go ahead and click on that link. Click the top left to follow the creator or the... Yeah, the top left, very top left is notify me on launch. And then you'll get an email and I'll tell you exactly when it launches. So go ahead and do that and you won't miss out on the Dead Sprint. You'll be able to get away while your friends won't because you were listening to Getting Geeky with Game Relief to prepare for the apocalypse. You need a games that you can have right now, not having to wait until next year to increase your horde of Halloween games? Well, have we got a treat for you. Zom's a half-brain card game is currently on Amazon. If you're part of Amazon Prime, you can get that with free shipping. We'll leave links in the show notes, but this game has a great feel of scary, I guess, as 
Garbage Pail Kids. If you like Garbage Pail Kids, imagine adult zombies that are a lot less scary, but still really cool. We The Leafs sat down with me and we played this game. If you go back and look at our pin post on Facebook or our last Family Fun Day Friday called Zombs, you'll be able to see what we all thought about it. So, to increase your hoard, go ahead and check that out at www.zomsgame.com. Well, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed Kickstarter Corner. Hopefully there was a game there that you found lovely and you're headed over to back. The cookies are almost done. How about you go ahead and check out the games if you haven't? Oh, you already did? Great. What one did you like? Awesome. Me too. Those were my favorites as well. So that's definitely good. Well, here's the cookies. We got macadamia nut. We got chocolate chip. We got white chocolate chip. Which ones do you prefer? Okay, here you go. Go ahead and enjoy them and sit back and relax as we join this interview of Dan and Game Relief already in progress talking about Gordian Layers Portal Bound that's currently on the Kickstarters. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Portals have suddenly emerged, connecting distant lands. Each land is rich with its own history and filled with its own cultures. From the tribalistic Taku to the magic-crazed Aelins, these societies find themselves now in conflict. You take on the role of an ambassador of one of these factions, leading them to a victory of your own design. During your shared turns, you will be going back and forth, mobilizing your heroes and procuring the forces that support them. You will use these forces to take locations by force or by gaining the trust of the people. If you don't wish to engage your opponent on the battlefield, throw out your most charismatic characters. They will convince the people to follow you. But without you, the portal closes for us here. Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me neither, but this is a story of Gordian Layers Portal Bound, a new game that's currently on Kickstarter by Crafty Lupine Publishing. And we're lucky enough to have one of the creators and masterminds behind this great game on with us today. Dan, is that correct? Is that how you fall in line with Gordian Layers Portal Bound? It is. I think you're being a little generous with Mastermind, but I'll take it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it, Dan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. Now, before we get into everything that's great about your game, Gordian Layers Portal Bound, let's rewind a little bit if we could. How did you get into playing tabletop board games? and whatnot it goes way back um i have a whole bunch of old board games from my grandparents um things like stratego and like the classics and then my parents would uh, supply like the monopoly versions and then from there i just had a bunch of great friends that were able to introduce me to games like magic the gathering the pokemon tcg and more recently things like scythe and um the train game uh ticket to ride okay so recently you got into the hobby gaming or what it is what it is with the scythe and ticket to ride or whatnot so imagine have you collected any more or got any more games besides those two because it seems like once a bug hits somebody it hits pretty hard yeah you're not wrong there it's uh it's good i have some decent self-control otherwise i'd probably probably be broke Oh, I hear you there. So, have you? Do you have a collection to go with now, or just the two games? Oh yeah, there, there's a bunch to name. Um, my next big investment, hopefully, will be Gloomhaven. Oh they, yeah, that's a big box. Yeah, big box. We're hoping to get that. Who knows when we'll get that at the table? I imagine you've played every game you have on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, several times. The the games do not get dusty. Oh wow, well, that's good. I wish I could say the same. Yeah, we we definitely enjoy. It. We have a good group of friends here, and my significant other enjoys them as well. Um, I like to say that I'm better than her at the board games, but that's not always true. Oh, wow. Well, at least sometimes it's true. I'd like to say that, too, but my wife usually schools me when we get to put the other to play a game. Yeah, I hear you. Well, there you go. So, out of the games on your shelf and whatnot, I know it's hard to pick a one-time favorite or an all-the-time favorite, but do you have a current favorite game? Yeah, I think Pandemic Legacy, probably. It's it's an enjoyable legacy game, and we're getting real close to the end. Oh, there you go. I hate to... Um, say it but i've still have yet to play pandemic my wife probably gets sick of me every time we go into 
Barnes and Noble and we walk by, I think Pandemic Legacy 2 is on their shelf at the stores currently. And every time we walk by, I tell my wife, we really need to play Pandemic. We It's been sitting on our shelf for who knows how long when we bought it. Yeah, for sure. After listening to your last podcast, knowing you have kids, it's a great cooperative game. You know, it's it's fun and it's it's a easy pace to like cooperate and work together on. I highly recommend it. It's a great game. Okay, yeah, it's sitting on our shelf. You said the legacy is the one year, the season one? Yeah, season one. Uh, Without any spoiler, because I know people, for some reason, they don't like those. Have you played the regular one or just the legacy? or Both, yeah, I've played both. Um, It it starts off similar to the original, so people who have played Pandemic, the original will get into season one no problem. But then from there, it takes you on a whole different journey. And is this something you're, with the legacy, that's something you're going to play one and be done? Is that how that works? Yeah, for uh, for the most part, the... uh, the nice thing about Gloomhaven is that there's a sticker set out for it because it's a legacy game as well. Um, but you can take the stickers off and reuse them again for future um, future campaigns. Yeah, we're going to have to get that because we got the Gloomhaven. I think we got it with the second printing or whatnot um, when it came back to Kickstarter. And yeah, big box. I want to get into it sometime. But yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, for sure. So that's cool. Do you, if you had to pick one or the other, what would it be? Would it be the pandemic or Gloomhaven or do they kind of Gloomhaven? You really get your money's worth. Uh, the pandemic, I'm going to be sad when it's over. Uh, you know, that's, it's been a challenge certainly, but I think Gloomhaven by a little bit. Oh boy. And you, but you probably got more plays out of pandemic overall. I imagine. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely much further along, but, uh, if if you like D and D, if you like those styles where you like build your character up, um, there's a there's more to that style, uh, more, more to that mechanic rather in Gloomhaven than Pandemic. Gloomhaven is they're they're both uh, co op, aren't they? Uh, correct. Yeah. If you were to do one thing to either of them to enhance it or make it better, being a designer yourself, what would that be? Oh wow, that's a great question. Um, I think pandemic. I think now that I've played it, I think the rule book could be a little bit more um, expansive. I think it can cover some of the interesting scenarios that we bumped into and some of the language. Um, maybe because I appreciate specificity, um, it could it could be a little bit more specific, um, or maybe just the the language of the authors is not the same language as my brain. So just uh, interpreting it as a little bit of a challenge for me. Okay, so they need somewhat of a dictionary to go along, maybe. Um, a dictionary, but there's um, an, there's also just so many interesting corners you get painted into when you play that game. That like, oh, can, am I allowed to do this? Am I not allowed to do it? So we've had to do a lot of research online to get clarification around some of the rules, the different buildings that you get, things like that. Now, on the completely different, at least I think it's completely different side of the coin, is... Uh, game that you created uh, Gordian Layers Portal Bound it seems like it's more it's not co-op is it? It is not cooperative no you're definitely trying to beat everybody else. Oh great yeah we prefer even though we have that on our shelf and we got Gloomhaven we much prefer to go after each other's throat or so it would seem in our family so like we said word on the street is you created a new game Gordian Layers Portal Bound that's currently on Kickstarter. What can you tell us about that great game Dan? Um, well like like you said, it's a little bit more competitive. Um, I come from a background of games like Magic the Gathering, the Pokemon TCG, uh, Raw Deal, if, you've, if you were around back then, um, Magi Nation. So we, uh, there's a lot of card games in my history. Um, we started out designing this game as a, a step into that field, but we realized that that's not really sustainable with the way my friends and I have um, live our lives, you know, living in different zip codes, trying to make this game in our spare time. So we've designed instead an out-of-the-box card game that plays to the competitive uh, card gamer and board gamer and everyone, but you get everything in one go. You don't have to worry about expansions just yet. Um, it's, it's all there ready to be played. Oh, good. So I don't have to worry about got to catch them all or anything like that? No, <laughs> no, you definitely don't have to catch them all. We, we, we just give them to you. Oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah, because we have a hard time with uh, two. Well, we haven't really got into TCGs, but once something pops on Kickstarter and they have all these exclusives or whatnot, my wife's eyes get big and it ends up costing a lot more than it would otherwise because we got to get everything that they have on there. Or we try to. Got to catch them all. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Awesome. So if me and you were to sit down to play Gordian Layers Portal Bound, what would that look like, Dan? So uh, we can sit down across from each other, or if you know one of your kids wanted to play, um, it, it can 
accommodate up to four. And so we each get a deck to ourselves. We each have a specific uh, rule set for our faction. So maybe I wanted to play the knights. Maybe you're more of a robot kind of guy. Um, so you would have an individual rule card for your faction, which gives you access to different abilities and um, it gives it a little bit more flavor. And then from there, um, across the middle of the play area would be these location cards and diplomacy cards. The diplomacy cards give you different advantages um, based on how you want to play the game, whether you want to make your guys stronger, whether I want to make it more difficult for you to acquire the locations, um, things like that. And then the locations in the center are what we're actually fighting over. So we don't technically fight each other, but we're fighting over the same space. But because there's three um, locations at a time, we, we might just race. We might just avoid each other the whole game, or we might try to uh, fight over the same location. That's when the combat gets involved. Okay, so is it more area control trying to take over the locations then? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, just as a as a card game. We talked about, if, if I recall, um, with the, having the different characters and they having their different abilities or whatnot or different rule sets, that's an as, a symmetri- asymmetrical game, is that right? Yeah, I would, I would say it's a fair way to describe it. Okay, and is there two? To, is there four different factions then they can be, or more than that? We have six factions um, in full production right now. We have a bunch that have been brainstormed over the last five to ten years, but well, we have six that will come in the box. And what factions? You talked about knights and robots. What else do you got? Yeah, the knights are from Wodas. Um, the robots are from Nen. There are these uh, dark librarians, these these knowledge seekers from Ayla. There are the uh, more tribal faction from Daku. There are the more technologically advanced, think um, 1950s film noir, spy, PI, soldier sort of situations from Geyser. And then finally there are these refuge uh, sort of mutated uh, individuals from False Scordia. Oh, okay, yeah, so it sounds like quite a bit. And are the the rule sets are quite different? Not not quite different. We're all playing the same game, but the way we're allowed to play is slightly different. So, for example, if you were the robots, instead of your robots going to the discard pile, they go to what's called a scrap pile, and they become an available resource for you. Whereas if I'm playing my knights, um, I get this uh, this resource called Valor, and I can use the Valor tokens in order to um, make my guys a little bit stronger for combat. Okay, uh, it gives me, in explaining that, it gives me kind of a feeling of uh, Summoner Wars or Ashes. Have you ever played a game like that? Um, I've seen Summoner Wars, but I've never actually opened it up. Okay, yeah, we, we were like that one. It's similar to, I, I think of it as chess, but then there's a bunch of different factions. You're playing with cards instead of actual pawns and different things. But everybody's got their own, uh, we're playing the same game, like you said, but everybody has their different rule sets or different things they can do depending on what faction you select. Is that the one where you get like a spell book? Is that is that that one? I think that might be, I want to say that's... Um, is it Mage Ward or something else? I have, yeah, I think that might be Mage Ward. I'm not 100% sure, I, but I think that one has more of a rule book, um, uh, a spell book, like you said. But no, this one's more like chess, and everybody has their factions, and it gives you like a different setup for every character or whatnot. I don't remember Ashes as well, but Summoner Wars, we played that a few more times, I think, and everybody has a different setup, but you have like a chess board, and you're trying to take out their queen i think if you will or their main summoner yeah that that sounds familiar to me that's what i get kind of but this in this one you're trying to go for certain locations so if i get all those three locations or how do, how do i go about winning gordian layers portal bound dan uh, that's a good question so the end game comes by acquiring enough of the locations um some locations are worth more than others but they're also typically harder to acquire um you have to have enough influence over the um individual location and uh at the other player in order to get the resources to acquire the location and the neat thing about the locations is that um each of them has a ability that is active while it's in the location zone but then once you acquire it it also has an effect that could be a one-time use it could be a, an ability you trigger later 
um, or it could give you a permanent uh, effect as well. So the locations um, are very useful as you play the game. Sometimes you don't want to conquer a particular location. You want to leave it on the board, and your opponent wants to conquer it in order to take an advantage away from you. Well, you kind of have me sold. I don't know about everybody else, but you said you've been working on it for quite some time. Yeah, you know, um, being adults now, it's it's been challenging to sit down and just find the time to crank it out, and we've gone through so many iterations of the rules, and we have so many other factions designed um, I have I have some in my back pocket that hopefully if the Kickstarter goes well and uh, we find time in the near future we can eventually get to that one. Um, but yeah, it's it's taken us a while to get here. But now that we're here, we're very excited about it. We're very proud of the game. Um, the the playtesting has all gone really well. We've gotten good feedback, and now we're just trying to put some art together. You know, none of us are artists. Um, we're just we're just a couple guys that really like to sit down at the board game table. So we're we're trying to get this Kickstarter going so that we can put some uh, put some art on the cards and make it pretty for the people who get exposed to it. Okay, so is that what the main purpose besides people being able to get the game so they can play? It? But that's where this, a lot of the six thousand dollars is going towards. Yeah, that's where a majority of it's going to go. Um, we we have our set up through the Game Crafter. Um, they're going to be the guys that are printing it, and then we just have to get. Um, the art together because art's not cheap you know our art is what really makes the game come alive you know we we have designed the fluff around it the story but we need the art to make it uh, visually appealing for for the players of the game so once we hit that goal do we have an artist picked out or how that go down um i have a couple artists that i've been working with um you know we, we have a pretty small budget right now um, but I've been trying to find a couple artists, and I think my, I think our goal is going to be just to have one artist per faction, so you kind of get the same style throughout, and we'll be able to, um, you know, really bring the flavor of that faction to life. Um, hopefully, by tomorrow, I will actually have a, a brand new uh, tomorrow being my Sunday. Um, I'll have the final preview or the, the, the final view of a librarian from Ayla for you our, our first piece of art will finally be finished so oh good and you'll throw that up on the kickstarter page i imagine because that way we can see what kind of art there will be yeah it'll be um it'll be on the kickstarter it'll be on our instagram under crafty lupine publishing and it'll go up on the facebook page of the same name okay awesome and you talked about this take being adults and stuff and happened to actually adult it's taken you quite a while to with you people in different zip codes to make it or whatnot so i imagine there was quite a bit of play testing during those years during the play testing has there ever been anything you guys had to scrap because it just wouldn't work for accordion layers oh certainly certainly um it's the the first iteration of the rules um it was pretty pretty loose um, it, there was a, a, very, a lot of swinginess to the game. Um, it kind of felt like sometimes if you won that very first battle, you can just snowball to the end. And we were also trying to make it um, uh, a CCG, a, a collectible card game. So you know, we wanted to compete in the same arena as like Legend of the Five Rings and Magic the Gathering because um, we, we were very competitive when we were younger. It was kind of mellowed out now, but um, we've scrapped a lot of different rule sets. How many do you think? Major rule sets? I bet half a dozen. I bet we've gone through half a dozen big rule changes. Wow. Well, and so somebody likes what they heard and stuff. They like this final rule set that you're having, and they want to go ahead and jump on and become a uh, backer or whatnot. They want to step through the portal, I guess is how you have it. They're going to have to take some out of their back pocket so they can get your uh, whatever faction you're holding out on us in your back pocket. How much are they going to have to pull out of their wallet? So, of course, there's always the $1 version on Kickstarter. Um, the the maximum reward, which I, I'm super stoked about, is the the maximum pledge, rather, is 150 And that gives the, the full game with um, an additional four player mats um, when the art comes through we're going to take some of the big art pieces um, from the location cards and put them on the really nice play mats so that each player has not only their faction card and their deck and their heroes and characters but they also have the faction um, layer as we call it each each faction lives on their own layer um, play mat so it really you really get immersed in the game as you're playing it um, but the game will cost around $60. Um, 
post Kickstarter from the Game Crafter. Okay, so the becoming a portal bound, the sixty dollars that'll give me just the game. The the portal bound is going to be the uh, there's an early bird version. Um, so once the art is printed and um, the the Kickstarter is successful. Um, the early bird version will be the sixty dollar pledge that gets the people, uh, those people, the game as soon as soon as humanly possible with the full art edition. Um, and they'll also get the um, print and play version. We've uh, developed a PDF that will just have the cards in in a, in a high definition, so that while there won't be any art on it, you could print the cards out, sleeve them up, and actually start playing the game. And then when the full printed version with the art comes out. Um, we'll send them that game uh, first. Okay, so I'll just have to keep my eyes closed because once the art comes up, because we really like neoprene mats. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, the, there's a gentleman I have working on um, Wodas's, uh main city of Nevermore right now, and he's a talented individual. Um, so that will hopefully be the second piece of art I get to show on the Kickstarter, and that should be... Um, Hopefully middle of next week, um, but that'll go up on the Kickstarter on uh, hopefully Wednesday, and then um, Instagram and Facebook as well. Oh boy, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, even though the art's not there necessarily yet, I am loving what I'm hearing you putting down, Dan. Well, thanks. I I, I like the game. You know, again, we're really proud of it. Um, we feel like people who play games like Magic the Gathering, who are really competitive, will enjoy this game as well as your more traditional board gamers and maybe people who like the cooperative or less competitive games because we feel like we, we sit right in the middle of the two. We're able to give you a gameplay that is um, easy to learn, um, quick to play, but also, if you want to delve into it, we'll have the depth of strategy that the, the really strategic individuals will like. Um, it doesn't have the big swinginess like some of the other games might have. You're not guaranteed to win just because you start off hot. Um, you know, there's, there's plays that you can make. You're always involved, always invested. I think that has a lot to do with the way the cards are played. Um, our main mechanic is a discard mechanic. So the, the cards, when they're played... Um, you have to discard other cards in order to play them. So you, you can't really get that snowballiness you might be able to get in other games. How big is my hand? Am I working with the hand or a whole pile? Or what am I working with exactly, Dan? Yeah, you're working with five. So you start the game with five. Uh, there is a mulligan rule. Um, and then every turn, each player draws three cards. And because the game is a shared turn, how it works is I play a card, you play a card. I play a card, you play a card until we choose to pass. And then from there, uh, we're going to assign our characters to the locations. Um, we choose to play actions that will affect the combat or the resolution of the combat. And then um, we decide who, or we, we, we figure out who wins and gets the locations. So there's, it, it, it's paced. There, there's uh, uh, an even pace and a sharing of the time. So no one, you're not waiting on a combo to finish. You're not waiting on people to think about eight turns down the road. It's, it's, it's a measured game, and it, it feels good to play it because you're involved. You're, you're never out of it. And I, I, I think lots of, kind, lots of kinds of gamers will enjoy it. Okay, so it's not necessarily going to screw me up because I hear I suffer from AP or analysis paralysis. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We're actually... Uh, we're actually very uh, invested in avoiding analysis paralysis. Oh, that's always good, yeah, because they, they get me and then my family gets mad and I'm not able to make necessarily as many friends as I would otherwise. <laughs> well, I, I think you and I would get along just fine at the card table. Oh, there you go. Awesome. Well, they, yeah, they won't be able to, the game will take forever to play, but at least we'll have fun. That's good. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Now, looking at all the other games on Kickstarter, a lot of them come already ready to go. They have their art and whatnot. How, how did you make that decision to decide to come to Kickstarter before the art was done, Dan? It was a challenge. We had a lot of uh, discussions about it. Um, but for us, we, we got the game to the point that we feel like it's honed and ready to go. And um, we just, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher by trade. Um, teachers, you know, don't always make a whole lot of dough. So it's, it's really our... Um, our desire to see the game finished. Um, 
We're, we, we, we know that it's uh, a big ask of the backers to put their faith in the, in, in the, in the time into waiting for the game. Um, but we, we like our system. We really like it. The people we've put it in front of seem to enjoy the process of playing the game. And if, if we can just find the right backers, we'll get the game put together and they'll, they'll appreciate the, the experience they get from our game. We, we really believe it. Awesome. You said you put it in front of other people and whatnot. Have any reviewers reviewed the game and what do they think about it? I haven't had any um, like big name reviewers review it. It's mostly um, my play test group from here. Um, I have a bunch of friends that play Magic the Gathering. I have a bunch of board gamers. Um, so it's been, it's been their two cents. And you know they can be pretty critical sometimes, um, especially when playing Magic the Gathering. Um, but we, we've put in enough people in front of it that I think we have an honest opinion of what we're doing. Um, and hopefully there'll be some reviews as well. I've shipped out the game to several individuals. So hopefully on Instagram by the middle of the month, uh, maybe around the 20th, actually, we'll have a, a couple of actual reviews online from people that I've never met before. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, a lot of people like to like to see what other people think about somebody's game. So that's good. And now when it comes to Gordian Layer Portal Bound, what would you say you're most proud of, Dan? Oh, that that's a good question. Um, I think I think that we've turned this world we've created into a playable game that feels as though it represents the world we've created. Um, the other two individuals are probably closer to the masterminds you, you described at the start of the cast. Um, they're just two really creative individuals in two very different ways, and their imaginations are um, unparalleled to the people I know. Um, I'm, I'm kind of the third voting voice in the group, uh, so while I, I have designed a large portion of the game, their imaginations have really driven this forward. So I'm, I'm proud of the world we created and the game that represents it. Oh, cool. And you're the one that had the guts to come on and talk to me all about it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep you with that title, Mastermind, if you don't mind. Sure thing. You're very kind. Thank you. We talked about there's lots of games on Kickstarter. With all of those games out there, what makes your game pop or stand out as one my audience should go ahead and check out and then back if they like what they see or hear? I think what makes it stand out is just the uh, the pace at which it's played. I think... Th- I think there's very few oh, there's very few games I have played that um, allow the the sharing of turns and the and the involvement in the game the way this one does. Um, it also takes that involvement and applies it to a card game that is you know maybe more appealing for people who've played Magic the Gathering or Legend of the Five Rings. So. Um, I, I think it's a nice intersection of a lot of different things. So that's awesome. And they'll need, also need to watch out for the art. Hopefully a little bit of it will be up before this episode goes live or whatnot. But you've got, like I said, I, like I keep saying, uh, gameplay and everything, you seem to have gotten me So I just got to see if my wallet has the bucks in there or whatnot. Sure. Well, if, if, you're, if you're in doubt, um, we're going to have a low-res PDF print-and-play version that'll be up soon. So if you have like um, your basic card sleeves for card games, you can print out the, the print-and-play version and give it a whirl. And then if... It, if you like it, then you'll be able to play it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it looks like people can go ahead and download and play our free print and play here. Yeah, so it looks like that's under the gameplay and as well as the rule book. So that's awesome. For sure. For sure. So that's cool. And like I said, we'll make sure we leave all the sh- links in the show notes so people can go ahead and click it over so they don't have to go ahead and stop what they're doing and type everything in. They can just go ahead and click that. People like to click the links if they can. So that's awesome. Now, I know you said you listened to a couple episodes, so that's awesome. We appreciate it. So maybe you're prepared, maybe you're not. But the next portion of our show, Dan, is called Adventures in Application Acquisition, where we talk about an app, be it for your cell phone, your tablet, your computer or even a video game and it doesn't even necessarily have to be related to uh, tabletop board gaming or anything like that just an app you use a lot of it can be a functional app or a funny off the wall app it could be anything is there an app you use a lot of that we can talk about for a moment dan yeah you bet um and this may sound like a total plug but being a teacher um a lot of my students use grammarly (laughs) so um that's a, that's a that's a neat app just for like corrections and for like those little silly errors that your brain doesn't process but 
a programmable pickup. So that's um, that one's a convenient one if, if you don't want to look like a like a, a ditz when you're um, crafting up a text message or an email. Um, Marco Polo is one I, I really enjoyed. Um, it's it's like a trimmed down version of um, oh gosh, what is it called? Uh, Snapchat. Um, it, it's a, it's like a video text message. You just put it together, send it off, and it's, it's real simple. Not a lot of filters, not a lot of extra stuff to it, but it's it's a fun way to interact with friends who aren't nearby. We've we've used it occasionally for the for putting the game together. Um, and then for the really big nerds out there, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Um, if if you like Final Fantasy, this is a, a nice calling back to. Um, other games so those are three apps that i enjoy myself final fantasy that, that's a game app isn't it yeah you bet okay awesome and then you got grammarly so i like if i type something in there it'll tell me if my grammar is on or off yeah and it also make like all the little corrections too so it, it can make some of the bigger corrections like the grammar and tense but it'll also do just like your basic um editing Oh, good. Awesome. So that's how, what subject do you teach, if you don't mind my asking? I do a little bit of everything, uh, but science and math are my favorite. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, we do the same thing as we homeschool. So do you ever have to do you get people that their assignments, or I guess math, you wouldn't know, really necessarily need Grammarly, but for the other one, do they ever type their stuff in and you put it in there and see if, it was, if the grammar comes out correct? Yeah, you bet. We, we do a lot of lessons around it at school. Um, but for, for certain individuals who um, maybe aren't just the auditory learners, having Grammarly to like point it out to them and help them learn it, you know, because there's so many different styles of learners, um, having, the, having that app available to them you know, is really useful. I, I wouldn't say it's necessary for the everyday learner, um, but if, because there's so many different kinds of learners, it's definitely a useful tool to have ex- exposure to. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. And then you talked about Marco Polo. People have talked about that before with the being like a video chat or whatnot. So with one, out of all of those three apps, would what would be one thing you would do to enhance one of them, Dan? Hmm. I think having most exposure to the Marco Polo uh, in my own personal life, um, I think just having... Um, a, a cleaner look because I, I really like how trimmed down it is compared to Snapchat. Um, so just having the, I think I think it just needs a visual upgrade, like a, a quality of life improvement. But otherwise, I, th- I think the app does exactly what I needed to do. Okay, awesome. We try to make a green podcast around here. So if anybody, any of the people who deal updates or. Any of the creators of Marco Polo ever listening? You heard it here first on getting geeky with Game Relief. What Dan would do to make that a little bit—he likes it already, but to make it a little bit better. What Dan, the creator of Gordian Layered Portal Bound, that's currently on Kickstarter, would do to make the Marco Polo app a little bit better. I'm gonna put you on the spot if that's okay. If not, we can go ahead and delete this out. But you said you listened to some of the podcasts. What would be, if you could give me one piece of constructive criticism to make my show better, what do you think that would be, Dan? Ooh. Ooh. I'm so glad that you're open to constructive feedback. That's awesome. I, w- I wish more people were. Um, I, I like your segments. I, I, I like the way you break it up. Um, it's, I, I think there needs to be, um, just, just listening to it myself, maybe some sort of transition sounds or music just so there's that, that processing moment. So like you you go from your kickstart to your corners and then you have some transitions between um, like your, your major segments, but for like some of the smaller things, it seems like it goes from, from one to the next really quickly. So like an, an opportunity that feels like you're taking your breath and you're catching your, you're catching your thoughts for the next part. Cause it, it really does feel like, um, like, you have the structure of a uh, proper radio show or a um, uh, like, like somebody who really has a grasp on like just, just producing. So I think just having a, a little bit more like um, not, not um, empty airtime, but having just a little bit of a, a filler in between the, the little parts of your show. You also use the word great a lot, so maybe just a synonym for that. <laughs> yeah, it keeps changing. At first, when I started off, it was cool beans, and then my wife said recently it was 
I forget what she said, but I said something else that keeps on changing or whatnot. I'm I'm preferential to the uh, word groovy. Groovy. There we go. As as a suggestion, <laughs> we could try to implement that. That would be great. And, but yeah, so adding um, little. I know we have something for Kickstarter corner, but possibly something to get us into adventures and application acquisition or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatnot. That's what I use. Whatnot. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That that one comes in my, around in my family too. So that's what you're saying, add some kind of jingle or some kind of transition into the next portion? Yeah, or even just like a little swipe noise, just just like a little something to, to make that, that break really clean. We'll have to see what we can do. I've been, I tried to do that on this last episode that I released with the different segments or whatnot, just splitting up the music or whatnot. But yeah, so I'll look into doing that, so that's awesome. Yeah, it, it definitely wasn't as obvious in the... Um, in the zombie uh, episode that I listened to of yours. Okay, the zombies, yeah, I tried to do that quite a bit in that one. The, the, the one I listened to, um, if I pull up your website. Yeah, if anybody's looking, he's looking right now, he probably already knows what it is, but if anybody wants to find us, or li- if you're, you're obviously listening somehow, but you can find our website at GamerleafGo.com. That's kind of like Pokemon Go, but it's really Game Relief Go. I was listening to episode 194, so that was it, it was during that episode that I felt that it could use a little bit more of a transition. Okay, awesome. So we'll have to go back and look at that and see what we can do. I really appreciate the feedback, Dan. People say people have a hard time with it, but I've always been one for it and try to do what I can to change things. That's excellent. That's excellent. I think it's a great attitude to have because nobody's perfect. We can always improve. For sure. That's awesome. Like I said, we'll make sure we leave the links in the show notes. I could carry this on and on. I could talk to you all night about Gordian layers, but in order for you not to I know you're up way past your bedtime, Plus, I'll be getting there soon, and I want to really get this up as soon as I can so other people can benefit and hear all about everything that's great about Gordian Layers Portal Bound. Minus coming there to your hometown to stalk you, Dan. How are people going to go ahead and keep up with this or anything else you and Crafty Lapine Publishing has in their future? Well, definitely check out our website, um, GordianLayers.com, um, and then our Instagram will have my updates and um, the art as it is produced, so Crafty Lupine Publishing. And then the Facebook will be our forum for answering questions and giving general updates about how the game is coming along. Um, so Crafty Lupine Publishing on Facebook. Okay, awesome. And if you get us the links, we'll make sure we leave those in the show notes so they can just click on over. Awesome. Any final parting words on why somebody, if they haven't yet, I don't know why they wouldn't have, but why they should go ahead and at least check out Gordian Layer Portal Bound, the Kickstarter page currently that's up there? The best thing I can say is um, if you're looking for something new, something a little bit different that's paced and fun, fun with other people, this is a great game to try out. And we really appreciate everyone giving us a chance, knowing that we're kind of doing things a little bit backwards, a little bit slower um, in looking for the art in this way, but we really appreciate it, and we think the people who are going to back us are going to be glad they did. Yeah, there's already been, and I don't know how many super backers, but in the comments at least, there's already been two super backers that look like they jumped on. Yeah, we we have some people who uh, who got some faith in us, so I'm really glad to see that. I'm really excited about it. Well, there you go. Yeah, go ahead and check out Gordian Layers Portal Band while you're still listening before you forget about it, and we'll leave all the links in the show notes. Once again, we want to thank you so much, Dan, for coming on Getting Geeky with Game Life to talk all about Gordian Layers Portal Bound and the little bit of tangent that we went off on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, Game Relief. It was an enjoyable experience. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I know I did. That it was a pretty cool game, or so it sounds. Wondering what's going to happen later on in the week? Well, we're going to be sitting down with somebody from Level 99 Games to talk all about BattleCon Unleashed, the ultimate BattleCon edition that's currently on Kickstarter, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, until then, I hope you'll get geeky stay geeky and bring others into Geekfold. Game Relief out. Gamerleaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamerleaf's luck holds up.